This is my Echeveria Whimsy. This is my own hybrid. It is a cross between an Echeveria Monroe and a Black Prince. More specifically, a Willy Wonka, so which is the longer form of Black Prince. Hello there, my name is Liz, a self-confessed succulent addict. Welcome to my channel, Growing Succulents. Now this little cutie here has formed two variegated plants. So this one and that one are the two oldest plant of this bunch. Can you believe that? So they're the oldest and the smallest as well. But the new ones hasn't formed any variegation yet. These are the newest addition to the family. So these two pink cute ones are only freshly made or should I say they're only about six weeks old. These two grew because I decided to take a cutting about six weeks ago to see if it's going to form any new babies and what the new baby is going to look like and six weeks later these two pop out and I wasn't even expecting them to sprout out that quickly. So it is now the last month of summer. Hang on, I just saw something here. There's a baby growing right inside there. So this is from a leaf that, oh look, it's got roots. You can see it's already rooted. So this is grown from a leaf that I plucked out from the bottom. I already saved actually a couple of babies. From this I've taken off so what I do I just pluck the leaves off like I remove say for example there's a leaf down in the bottom here that I you can't even see from the top see that one there now it's hiding a little leaf look that one there so all I do is there you go supposed to say wriggle it from side to side and she'll just pop out and she decided to just pop out and what I do with these ones is just throw them in like so and after a few months of course they're going to grow like this one here and when they do grow like that before they have roots I leave them I don't touch them but once they start growing roots because once they have roots they can absorb uh, moisture or water so they can live basically so and then this ones now I plucked from this plant here which I threw just like that and leave and forget and after a few months you're gonna have surprise little babies like this and so this one now I'm gonna insert and just stick it there and that should grow another babies so now that one I put aside and I have this uh, growing in my master succulent soil mix and straight and I just put some small or fine grit granite on top see there you go so the soil underneath there so I after I put them in or potted them in, I just water it. So I would water this every day because when they're still small like this and they have roots, they want to take in as much water as they can so they can grow really, really, really fast. So that's why you need to water it just about every day uh, if your soil mix is dry. So if you can feel that it's light, then water it but if it's still heavy like this one I watered this last night and so I'm going to leave this for a few days to dry up because my master succulent soil mix doesn't dry up that quickly if it's just coconut peat then it would dry up much quicker but this one this can stay moist or the little plantlets have access to water when they need it because of my soil mix so probably another week uh, is when I worry this again. So I just spray on top. They just grow really, really fast. Now this one now, my cause for concern is this one. So I chopped that off and the one that I chopped off, I didn't expect it to take on that quickly. So this is the head of it. And I've grown it somewhere a bit protected. And this is what happens. It goes green. So this is now showing a little bit more like the father. So
A couple of days ago, I was admiring the beauty of this beautiful Echeverria Whimsy. The variegation is just so gorgeous. And look how thick the leaves are. So the parentage is Echeverria Monroe and Echeverria Black Prince. So you can see the Monroe from the Farina. So it's very obvious and especially now with the babies, you can really see the influence or the traits of the Echeverria Monroe. So this one here now is another Echeverria Monroe from the same mummy. So they have the same parentage or so the same plant I've taken them from. So this one is grown from a leaf as well, just like this big one here, but this is only about a year old. They are fairly slow growing, so you can see the size of this plant compared to this cutting now that I've taken. So this one is almost a year old and still small. So anyway, I'm going to get on with this and uh, I'm going to do something very, very drastic. This two here has been growing so slow for a very, very long time and I'm waiting for the others to variegate. So whether they variegate or not, I don't know. But this one is starting to show some color changes. So maybe it's just because of the season, the changing because uh, we're getting colder nights and hot days nowadays so I'm not really sure so I thought since I'm so inspired by these two cuties here so I decided I'm gonna chop the whole lot off maybe I'll just leave a couple but definitely this one's gotta go especially now that those two leaves are drying up so they're showing signs of stress or something I don't know I might lose them this new leaves growing in there, that yellow one but what I want to do now is I want to have some babies on those two they've already grown long enough so now I'm gonna get on with the job and I'm using my knife and I'm just gonna chop them off at the back about an inch and there you go off with her head so now I'm just gonna let this dry up so we'll put you there you stay beautiful, I'm going to let you dry up. And this one now, I'm going to do the same. There you go. There's plenty of nodes. Both of them's got plenty of nodes. So this should still survive. And look at that beautiful. Oh my goodness. How gorgeous you are, those two. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful plant. Anyway, so now those two now... I'm going to let that dry up and I'm still going to put them in the same pot. And this one's now, I'm going to start chopping them off. There you go. Beautiful. And look, another leaf growing and it's red. Looks like it's variegated, isn't it? Oh, gorgeous. Anyway, I've checked for mealybug and there's none. So... This white fluff there, I might as well just take it off. I've already checked it. It's not a mealybug. Remnants of a mealybug. So, mealybug doesn't seem to like this plant. They lick it and then they go away. So, anyway, this one now. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to be drastic. Normally, I would just leave them here. So, I'm still going to do that. But, hang on. Let's go. Okay, dogs. But... I'm concerned about CDC scoria and scoria can hide mealybug. See that? That's a sign of a mealybug hiding there. Maybe it's already moved on, but that white the holes on the scoria they like to hide in there. So anyway, so this one now I'm gonna leave one plant because I don't want it to get lonely. There you go. Oh, beautiful. Oopsie. See, I drop a leaf, so hopefully that will grow as well. I'll put the leaf in here. And should we take this off as well? Oh, three. We have to leave those three. That's enough. 
<laughs> I've taken three off so it will be fair so I'm gonna leave this now and put it back where I had them provided there's no rain tomorrow so I have to check the weather forecast and if there's rain I'm not gonna put them outside but if there's no rain they are going to go outside but they will still have time to dry up or callous off even for a couple of hours that's fine if they have time to dry up before you put them back into the big wide world and this one now I'm gonna slowly acclimatize this because I chop it off from there and then I put it somewhere shaded and see that's what happens so had I left it so when I take you take a cutting like this say for example put it back where you had it so normally if I have a bigger pot I would just put them here like that and just let them dry up and root up and when they start forming roots I put them in the soil like this one or plant them in so I lost another leaf <laughs> so anyway I might as well remove the bottom leaf here okay so that's still pretty oh that one's already drying off so anything that's sort of getting older you might as well take them off to propagate rather than leaving them there to just wilt away and dry like this ones there you go so that's it and I will keep you an update of all these uh, things that I've done. I'll just put this video out so that way you have something to watch and get excited about. So we can both wait in anticipation for the progress of these plants. I've knocked off one of the variegated leaves. So I'm just wondering if this is going to grow a variegated plant or not. We will find out. And these ones here, I might as well take them off from there and put them with the rest of the gang. This one's now, I'm going to put it back where I got it from because that would have dried up already overnight. So it has six hours to dry up since I cut it last night or this morning. <laughs> so now I'll just put it back where I got it from which is in this spot there you go so now that you lost your pretty variegated ones hope the new ones will grow into beautiful beautiful variegated babies and this off cuts here I would if I didn't have a grow light I would put this in my southwest facing window where there's plenty of filtered light so it would be bright say for example this area here okay so I would put those cuttings in there where it can look at the mummy over there or gaze at the mummy over there but since well this is if I haven't got a grow light but since I have a grow light I will put it near the grow light well it can grow much 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 faster or root up much quicker and I am running out of space as well here because I've got all sorts of things here but anyway this can go so that's I'm just putting this back outside this is my baby propagation actually I have to find a spot and move it somewhere but this one can just sit at the fringes of the light and she would grow roots happily in there much quicker.